Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. As you've probably noticed, I'm rocking the Valentine's February theme right now. But more importantly, the patch 2.1.0 notes just dropped, along with a video trailer of Aphelios. So I'm going to take a look at what the changes are going into the next patch, giving my initial impression, you know, run through and stuff like that. And I'm also going to be watching the Aphelios video. So before I get into the content though, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I make deck profiles, beginner friendly videos, gameplay highlights, and other lore related stuff. The road to 5k is on the way and I need all the help I can get so it'd be awesome if you joined. I also stream on Twitch often so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay. I've hit rank 1, got top 32 in the Monuments of Power tournament, and I'm very open to answering questions from chat. With that, let's get into the content. Let's go! So first we have a little video. I tested the audio. Audio is good. Um, I'm going to be in the way if I full screen, so I'm just going to watch it from a distance and read the cards out. It says, commune with the cosmic forces in the veiled temple, or just summon newfound strength through throughout Runeterra. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's so funny. It started with some like lore deep stuff. Oh my god, so philosophical. Or you could just, you know, play the broken card. Let's see. Oh, it's got music, yeah. I like it. One mana, two, one, elusive. You love to see more elusives in the game. This is a Targon card. Next is Strike. Draw one and shuffle me into the top three cards of your deck. Ooh. Okay, that's kind of spicy. So he's annoying. He's a lot less annoying than Zoe on turn one, at least, uh, for attack one. But he's a good draw, and then he shuffles himself into the top three. So you can... Okay, so he's giving you a draw now, and he's saying, I'm going to brick your hand later in the next three cards. But if you're just like cycling, you have Pale Cascades, Guiding Touches, and like typical Targon stuff, that's not really a downside. Whereas like I understand the thought process and the principle behind uh, the top three cards of your deck thing. I kind of like him. He, he's he's a little bit spicy, a little bit... Um, you know what's also good about him? He's an elusive that isn't going to stick on the board. Oh, this is actually kind of healthy then. I like the way they're taking this because you're not going to super buff him and then he's going to Nexus Strike over and over like Sparkle Fly and you know how unfun that mechanic is. This guy will always go away so you can't invest too much in him. He's just a draw one. I like that. Cool. The Sky Shadows. Two mana, three one. When I'm summoned, refill two spell mana if you behold a Nightfall card. Awesome. That's so good actually. Two mana, three one. Pretty mess stats. You hate to see one HP because it dies to every drain on the planet. But refilling two spell mana for free if you behold a Nightfall card and you don't have to Nightfall him or them, whatever this is, some Skyfish. Um, wow. That's kind of sick. Um, you know what? This is really good. Nightfall, like as a mid range aggro, whatever deck, it didn't really have a super good turn two curve. It usually tried to play Dusk Petal Creator on one, whatever her name is, and then like Dusk Petal Diana on attack two. And that was kind of fine if, if you could high roll it every time, but Sky Shadows is just a really good two drop. Curves, you get two spell mana, that way you can enable nightfall in future turns so i'm very excited about that the fangs four mana three two lifesteal more lifesteal okay targon healing for days play invoke a celestial card that costs three or less <clears throat> so his stat line's not very good but he has lifesteal and he invokes just on play that's pretty good more um, invoking stuff. I don't really like the early game invoke cards, but I don't know. We'll see if he sees play. I, I, four mana, three twos. Kind of. I don't know. This one's a toss up for me. There's so many things that already does his job. I don't know if he's going to be relevant as well. Uh, five mana, five four. The Cloven Way. Cloven. I don't know. Uh, overwhelm. Fine. Nightfall. Stun an enemy. If it's a follower, stun it again. That's pretty sick, actually. Um, I fear that this is going to be abused outside of Nightfall decks, of course, but this is a good 5 cost. You can play it after Nocturne. Stun. Stun it again. Sure. I mean, that's just a decent Nightfall card. I've always wanted more Nightfall stuff. I'm glad we're getting a support uh, package for it. The Veiled Temple Landmark. Okay. 4 mana. Each round, the first time you play two other cards, refill two mana and grant your strongest ally 1-1. One, one. It's so much... That feels so weird. It feels like a forced card. The first time you play two other cards, 
refill two mana which is good because it keeps you going so that you can play m even more cards than that so i, I guess this is kind of cool I, I this is not going to ever happen but you play this and you have nocturne and you play a couple things after nocturne's leveled and it reduces the enemy's attacks you know so that you can get your fearsome hit in and then you get two mana off of it as well so you can do like a pale cascade play just and your strongest ally probably nocturne is one one i don't know if that's the synergy they're going for but that's just the immediate scenario that popped into my head because i have nightfall fresh in the mind of course but all right um not sure what to think about that card Starbone. This had better. Okay, cool. I was about to say it better have something to do with Messenger, and it does. Two mana burst. If you behold Messenger, grant Celestial allies everywhere one one. <gasps> okay, that's kind of a cool way to take Celestials. I like this a lot. If you behold Messenger, so if you invoke him, if you like get him from all that kind of stuff, all Celestials gain one one. That's fun. So this opens a door of Iceborne Legacy. Um messenger a lot of people experimented with that when targon came out to no avail but hey bone kind of supports it let's go got the bone support okay oops stress testing one mana burst remove fleeting from all cards in hand when i'm discarded draw one fleeting oh this is a combo card wow remove fleeting from all cards in hand when i'm discarded draw one this is really sick with the four mana three three uh investigator card from p and z um that's just kind of sick i can see this being potentially powerful in combo decks like that troll gifts two mana burst grant an ally regen if they already have it grant them two two instead so this is the gift that keeps on giving really it is actually troll gifts wow so get something regen or if you already has regen so this basically should read give your trundle plus two plus two because that's how it's going to be used uh let's just revert whatever nerf we gave trundle or whatever and give him a card buff him up you're definitely gonna float mana so ftr is just gonna be good you can float mana play trundle play troll gifts on him and then he's just a problem if not you're giving stuff regen which is kind of relevant not the most powerful keyword it's usually only good on you know trundle and you know champions and such what is this thing gluttony fast uh shadow owls card kill an ally with last breath to summon a follower from your deck that costs one more uh, a lot of combos with this this is in line with the gates of helia i think it's called landmark but you could also just run this in they who endure callista and be pretty happy about it you get your last breath off you get, you know, your Curse Keeper killed, and then you can summon a 3 cost off of it from your deck and just continue the pressure. As long as you're not summoning um, Curse Keeper. That would mean, I think that's what... No, as long as you're not summoning the, the tree guy that summons two saplings. That would suck to get off of Gluttony. Because his effect wouldn't uh, activate. Ionia card. Flurry of Fists. Three mana burst. Grant an ally plus one and quick attack. If it already has it, grant it double. Ooh. So you're always going to get the plus one. That's kind of nice. If it has quick, it gets double. Double attack's kind of insane. Imagine giving this to Zed. Ha <laughs> ha Okay. Powder Pandemonium. Four mana slow. Summon a powder monkey and give this... No, give a random enemy vulnerable this round for each time you've plundered this game. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Get... <laughs> Budget harrowing. Summon a powder monkey and give a random enemy vulnerable this round for each time you've played or each time you've plundered. So you just summon a bunch of monkeys. That's a lot of damage and you're dealing two to their entire board. That's funny. I like that a lot. That's such a silly card. Wild Claws, five mana slow. An ally strikes an enemy, so we got single combat, but Noxus. Uh it's actually more like concerted strike, of course. An ally strikes an enemy, it doesn't get struck back. If it has overwhelm, deal excess damage to the enemy nexus. Whoa. That's so good. That's so good for Noxus, actually. So, concerted strike, but one ally, and if it has overwhelm, it beats the hell out of the enemy nexus. Cool. And Molten Breath. Six mana slow, an ally with fury strikes the two weakest enemies. That's a really strong, like, dragon midrange con uh, control tool. Not much else to be said. That's just, wow. An ally with fury strikes two enemies. Okay, man. Better concerted. <laughs> kind of. It's slow, though. 
And there's Zephelius looking menacing, I guess. He's got his scythe gun out. About to stab some uh, temple guy in the back. That's cool. Alright, so let's get into the patch notes now. It's called the Aphelios Champion Expansion. He gets the whole thing to himself. Look at that. Our most complex and adaptable champion to date. In League or in Lore? Or is he going to be like that in both? Aphelios has made his arrival in Legends or in Terra. The Weapon of the Faithful brings with him a small collection of new cards as part of the Aphelios Champion Expansion. Wow. That's exciting. For a deeper dive into Aphelios' design mechanics, check out our overview video with Director Umbridge. Okay, praise the moon and get Aphelios as soon as he lands and get a look at all the cards coming. So there's going to be a celebration. So login rewards, we're actually bringing these back. They're not just for new players. That's so awesome. You just get Aphelios? Do you have to pay for this at all? Wait, this is so cool. Lunar celebration, you just get cards. That makes me happy. Break out the fireworks. It's time for Lunar Celebration. Log in over seven days during the Lunar Celebration event period to earn rewards, starting with a free copy of Aphelios so that you can like start to try and start deck building. That's super cool. I love this. As well as a new Lunar Celebration quest each day for even more rewards. Complete all seven to earn the Year of the Ox card back. They're looking kind of nice, not going to lie. Wow, wait. Can I get a close? Whoa, whoa, spoilers. I want to get a close up on this. Tell me this doesn't look like some Call of Duty prestige emblem, right? I swear I've seen this ox before. It looks like Call of Duty prestige. All right, card updates. Ooh, oh, this is so spicy. I'm so excited for this. The release of Cosmic Creation introduced Zoe Victor Ribbon. Now that we've had a chance to see them in action, we know Zoe's been making portals and taking names. Victor and Ribbon, however, could use a little bit more attention. Ribbon buff, ribbon buff, ribbon buff. Okay, let's go. Patch 2.1 comes with a collection of card updates aimed at giving these champions a chance to shine along with some non-champion card updates. Aw, oh, you know what? I bet they gave, this is my guess, I'm gonna call this, they gave um, Rune Weaver 1 HP, she's gonna be a 3-2. It's just my guess. Like with Victor and Riven, as we move forward with future card updates, you're going to generally see more attention paid to newly released cards to ensure they're performing at an appropriate level. That makes sense. You want to release a, you know, a batch of cards. You don't want one thing overperforming and the other two or other you know, parts of the batch are just underperforming. That's not fun. So this makes sense. However, that doesn't mean cards from foundations won't see adjustments. This philosophy is specifically in regards to live design. Yep, I get it. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it. MF. <gasps> oh, they took away Overwhelm? Hmm. Misfortune's level 2 lethality does not quite line up with the difficulty of her quest. <laughs> They're saying she's too easy, bruh. This be too easy. Uh, we want to slightly reduce her ability to immediately end the game given she levels up. I think that will actually be relevant uh, in Scouts. In Pirate, MF never levels, so let's kind of throw that out the window. Scouts. If MF levels, I'm pretty sure they still win most of the games. However, not having Overwhelm will make them lose, I'd say, 3 out of 10 extra times. So this is a relevant nerf. Uh, this will actually hurt quite a lot. This also makes it to where, like, MF cannot attack over units that she finishes, right? So now you can cheat block her. This is probably the biggest implication now that I'm thinking about it. Misfortune would normally attack, let's say you put a 3 HP unit in front of her, um, and then she would kill it and then deal the 4 damage to face because she has overwhelm and the unit went missing during combat. Now she can't do that. The unit will disappear from combat, so you can put a 1 HP unit in front of her and she will do no attack damage, only her passive. And whatever else you're hitting with so that's actually super uh super big hit victor uh buffs i'm assuming from what they were saying okay so level up requirement eight created cards to seven so they reduce it by one now it creates a hex core upgrade on both play and round start that's sick okay so he gets one extra hex score just immediately one right away and then one per round start that seems fine that seems good you played seven i like it now it creates a hex score on both play and round start. so if you get a leveled up one this one you know dies you play leveled up you get a one on play fine victor's build up is often too slow uh we want to speed it up also give immediate impact love it great followers here we go 
Grand Plaza. When an ally is summoned, give it 1-1. One, one. When an ally is summoned, give it 1-0. And Challenger. Oh, they went with the lazy hit. Just take away the HP. Okay. Grand Plaza has been a positive new tool for mid-range Demacia decks, but stat distribution on top of Challenger makes it too easy to make profitable challenge trades while adding resiliency. This is a good nerf, by the way. This is, I'm not saying this is bad by any means. I'm just saying this is the one that everyone expected. No surprises here. And that is also fine, because I feel like this is a good nerf. We want to allow more wiggle room for counterplay, soften the ability to keep your plaza units alive after challenging with them. Yep. Alright, well, MF got hit and plaza got hit. Scouts, whew, kind of rough. <gasps> War chefs? Wait, we're making him a 2-2? That's awesome. That's way better than a 1-3. Now he can actually kill things. <laughs> When we made this adjustment, we had thought the retaining health was more powerful than attack. No, we were wrong about that, yes. Given the nature of support units needing the ability to at least trade into more board states, so we're making small... Okay, I like it. We might see Lulu Z Demacia again. We might see mid-range Demacia strategies come out, Grand Plaza War Chefs, uh, all this kind of stuff. Cool. Homecoming. No one saw... No one saw this. Like, what? No one's... New card, Pogchamp. No one's even played this thing yet. Uh, so now it's Will of Ionia pre-nerf cost, and you have to recall an ally to do it, or a landmark, and it also recalls the enemy landmark. Sure, whatever. Meh card, very meh. Uh, Greenglade Elder getting a little bump up though, plus two attack just out of nowhere. We wanted to make a few small changes directed at improving some of Ionia's core mechanics. Other stats make it pos impossible to be feasible, so this adjustment should provide hand buffing decks. Hand buffing decks? These don't exist yet. This is not mean streets of gadget sand, right? Straight out of Hearthstone. We're not playing hand buff decks on the daily, but maybe now we can. We got Greenglade Elder. We got Homecoming. Hey, things are looking up and up for you guys that miss uh, hand buff, whatever they're called, henchmen in Hearthstone. I don't even remember. Pharaon, no, Pharaon, don't get nerfed, please. When I'm summon create three, when I'm summon create two. Oh, eight damage instead of twelve. That's probably fine. I have you ever used three? Ask yourself this: if you've played Pharaon, have you ever used all three decimates? If so, it's one out of ten games. I think two is fine. Uh, prevent certain region combinations. Yeah, yeah, we're providing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's fine. Two is good enough. Huh? <laughs> what they just made it one cost that's so broken that's so good there's a lot of times where i'm sitting on like a certain amount of mana and i want to use blade and i also want to be able to use um the other combat trick i forgot what it's called off the top of my head the noxus one three mana plus three plus two y'all know what it is blade of exile is a bit too clunky and it's not often used when it's created <laughs> that's kind of sad to say we generally only change spell speeds and emergencies so we're reducing the cost by two to both provide payoff for turbo creating it early and for general ease of use this is awesome i love the turbo strategy of ribbon just getting her out as fast as possible i've done ribbon level on attack four and attack five like it happens so making this one cost slow is better than making it no i think three cost burst would have been kind of insane because that's a lot of stats one cost slow is fine i like this now you can do things in conjunction or swapping his stats. That makes sense. A 2 1 is way better. One of Riven's weaknesses is having to dilute your deck with her followers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this phrasing is so rude. I actually kind of like them. What do you mean, dilute your deck <laughs> with her followers? Generally weaker. Yep. For Blade Scar, we want to flatly increase its viability with a better stat line to give Riven's deck boost and the card itself more satisfying play pattern. So, here's a problem I had with this. Being a 1-2 was fine because you could get, you know, a blade piece that made him a 3-2. I think him being a 1-mana 3-2 is better than him being a 1-mana 4-1, right? Does everyone agree with that? I think so. Because 1 HP, detrimental. Every drain, um, make it rain pre-nerf if it ever comes back. You know, extra copies of MF are still relevant. You know, you say make it rain nerf or mega lol. It's still in the game. Um, Withering Whale. All kinds of stuff where I'd just rather him have the 2 HP. I I don't know. Uh, this change is fine. I don't know if I'm going to run him because I, I took him out of my list. Might put him back in. We'll see. Hush. Three cost. Mm, right. Yeah, that needed to happen. Hush ultimately counteracts two main strategies. Ah, man. I might have to take this out of mono SI now. Floating three is so hard. Ah, oh, floating two is so much nicer. Yeah, we can't abuse 
Hush anymore. Feels bad, man. Hush is still going to be good in Targon. Still going to be run at three of. It's going to cost a little bit more to use those options, especially if you want to use multiple Hushes, then Targon decks won't have as much fuel to work with per turn. So I understand the change. One, eight, one mana cost makes a big difference. We'll see. Uh, 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 uh. Give an ally 2 1 this round, Nightfall draw. Give an ally 1 1 this round, Nightfall. Oh. Oh. That's a big nerf. 1 1. Now it can't match. Like Sharp Sight. This just. Sharp Sight is just so much better as a combat trick now. While there are strong bursts. Oh, wow. That's what they're talking about. While there are strong burst spells at similar cost, Pale Cascade provides all target decks efficient combat superiority and protection without much opportunity cost given its built in card draw. By reducing the overall damage, we're removing some of the potential to create better trades. Wow. This is a rough hit. This is going to drastically change, like, Targon. <laughs> These combined is a big ouchies. All right. Oh, and that's it for the card changes. Wow, they really hit hard. Aw, oh, man. Rune Weaver didn't get an HP. Okay. It was a good guess, though. Don't worry. Um, patch 2.1 brings a new rotation. More labs. United Front. Quick draw. Good ones. I like them. I can't wait to see Lab of Legends. What is that? Uh, uh, uh. Our first Legends Lab. What? What is that? Progression, customization, adaptation. Lab of Legends gives you a choice between eight champs, each with their own pre made deck, and pits you against a series of increasingly difficult encounters. As you progress, you'll earn new cards, passive abilities, and items of power up cards. Oh, so it's a um it's another single player event. Wow, that's amazing. I want to play it so bad. Your Nexus Health carries over between rounds and only refill after a boss. Oh! This sounds really fun. I can't wait to play that. Emerge victorious, pun intended. At the end of a turn, you'll earn a unique icon based on your selected champion. Fight hard, experiment responsibly, try to collect them all. Cool, sounds awesome. Personalization, boards, Club Ox. Ah, Club Ox. Very good board in TFT as well. If the music is in lore, might be worth purchasing because the music is an absolute banger. Guardians, we got Lunar Beast. Uh, he's okay. Loud. Oh, what is that? New card backs available for purchase. This is um the Aphelio skin? Wow. That looks really cool. Whoa. MF. That's so sick. Uh, I don't like that guy that much. He's okay. Emotes. Cheeky. Cool. <laughs> Hello? Missing pings? Angie. Okay. Those are good. Cool box board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, deck. Yeah, everyone wants to play a Felios Nocturne. That makes sense. Balance changes for expeditions. Yeah, needs some help. Cool, 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 cool. Miscellaneous. Cool, 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 cool. Bug fixes. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. So we got through it. That was a lot of fun. It was really cool to see. I elaborated a lot too. So let's go. Well, that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.